Hey you guys, it's your girl Megan James and you are now tuned into the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast, period. And we have a special guest today, the specialist guest, y'all. Hi. The specialist <laughs> guest. Um, her name is Tina Ohari, also known as Tina the Witch. And yeah. she's here to give us a little tea, a little scoop. A little some some. Some some. You know. So just look into your camera, <laughs> let uh, people know where they can find you, who you are, a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I am the first daughter of the Conjure family, daughter of Lala and Uti Ohari. Um... You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter, mainly on Instagram, at Tina Marie Ahari. Um, I do rituals. I do spells. I'm an influencer. She dressed fly as fuck, just saying. I'm a bad she bitch. eating. <laughs> you know, <laughs> on the side. I'm a mom. I'm a, I'm a lot of things. So, But people know me as Tina the Witch and Tina the Rapper. And some other things. You do music? I don't do music. Oh. They call me that because of my lifestyle. Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> I'm crying. Okay, so what made you change? Because I've never... You know, okay, first of all, okay. y'all, I've been following Tina and her mother forever. Yeah. Um, They're, like, um, amazing people, literally. Yes. Um, We're going to get into that later whenever we Thank get Miss Lala on the camera. But I love them, my sisters. But anyways, we're going to get into it, sis. Okay, so okay. why did you change your name from Tina the Witch to... Tina Ohari. Okay, so basically, I feel like I was just known as Tina the Witch, just known as the witch, the girl who does spells, oh, she do voodoo, oh, this, this, and that. And like I said, I feel like I'm a lot more than just that. Mm -hmm. And I planned on expanding and doing other things, so I just wanted to be able to do that. I didn't want to just label myself as one thing. Right. right. So, um, what, like, what do you have... What like what are your ideas? Like what are you expanding on? Are you gonna start? I think you should do a clothing brand. You know that's crazy that because you, you can that. dress. I'll be like sis eight. She eight. <laughs> you know it's crazy because I actually do want to get into fashion. Mm -hmm. Like fashion has been one of um, my passions, and you know if you see like my family does a lot of um, high designer high end designer events. We go and. You know, we're very involved with that. Mm -hmm. My initial reason for getting involved with that was to, you know, make so much noise in that industry to be able to get a seat at the table. Right. Because I wanted to be involved. Right. I didn't just want to buy clothes in purses and be fly. Like, I want a seat at the table. I want, you know, to be in that world. Okay, so I want to know, are you single? Girl, I'm single as fuck. <laughs> okay, so. I'm super single. <laughs> Why, like, you're a bad bitch. Why are you single, sis? What, what had happened? What had happened? Okay, so... <laughs> no, I was doing some research, you know me. Okay. Um, I actually watched a couple of clips uh, of the Contra Family okay. um, show. Right, And, like, it's right. so crazy to me because, like, I feel like I know so much more about, like, what, like, people than other people know about people. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if, if, because, if, if it's because I have, like, a personal relationship with yeah. your mom. But, like, yeah. like I said, I followed your family. So, I, the clip... That I was like, ooh, it was when you and Rico was arguing on the, like, mm -hmm. on the, what was it, like, in the street? It was, in, it was on the lake. Like, it, was it was on like the lake, lake in my neighborhood. Water. Yeah. So I was like, okay, oop, they broke up, so they're not together anymore. Yeah. And then I seen you on the blogs with Ian, sis. Mm, yeah. Okay, so give us, what's the, what's the true tea on that? So the true She's tea. She's single, y'all, by the way. She's single is the true tea, but I am. what's tea? <laughs> uh, the tea is... I just be doing shit. That's mm -hmm. really the tea. Like, honestly, if I'm feeling a person or if I'm dating a person, then I am. But I have said the entire time since we've been posted or I've been posted with Ian, like, I got a boo, but I am single. Like, I've right. made it, I made, I made it very clear. So he claims me as his girlfriend. Um, I actually broke up with him like a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little tea, but <laughs> you know, I still, um, you know, I have love for him. I we're on good terms and stuff. The reason why I'm single is because um, I just don't want to accept less than I deserve. Right. The bar has been set extremely in hell. Just no, no, <laughs> no, not in hell. I mean, for other people, yes, but the bar has been set at extremely, like you know, to most people, unreachable standards. Mm -hmm. What do you for, mean by unreachable standards? <sighs> For how I was raised, for my oh, mother, okay. for my family. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you date a rapper and he, you know, spend like $10,000 on you. I'm not impressed by that. Period. Because, but like, you have, you're a bad bitch and you have your own business. And you have a lot of things that these girls... You're in your 20s, right? Because I'm in my 30s. I am. I'm okay. 26. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you have a lot going on for yourself that yeah. most like Instagram influencers at your age mm -hmm. don't have. So they don't understand 
you know, the standard yeah. anyway, because it's just That's like, true. well, $10,000 doesn't impress me because I'm making that in a day through my business. Yeah. And it, it's not even just that either. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that a lot of people don't understand, like, you know, guys meet me and they just think like, she got it all going on. She got this for herself. She's independent. She's this, she's, she's that. I don't have to do nothing for her. Like, you know, you know, in the past, because mm-hmm. that shit ain't flying no more. Period. Um, but that's not even the case. I'm spoiled as fuck. Like, my mom drops, like, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on us, like, yeah. on a regular. So yeah. when you're dropping fifteen, it's just like, you want me to jump up and down? Like, I'm, it's cool. No, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> like, that's it. Like, you know, but that's not even the reason. Like, like I said, the reason I'm single is just because uh, I have not met the person that is offering everything that I want. Mm-hmm. And, you know, until I do, I'm not going to tie myself down and not get what I deserve. Well, can you teach us the keys on how to manif- manifest a man, child? Because I've been trying to manifest a man for years. Okay. I've been single. <laughs> okay. Like, how do like how do we bring that type of the energy of the guy that we want into our lives? I think that it all starts with yourself. Mm-hmm. I think that it has to do with yourself. Um, to be completely transparent, like, you know, I've always been or appeared confident or even, you know, a lot of people think I'm arrogant. Um, you know, in the past, I feel like I've pretended to care like a lot about myself, or pretended to think I was this, this and that. The key to attracting that is really giving a fuck about yourself, mm-hmm. like really caring for yourself, really knowing like uh, you not taking that. Mm-hmm. Like, like I just said, like, when I, I, like, I know I said I was single and I broke up with him. I know it's confusing, but. No, I get it. It's like y'all go together real bad one day and the next but, day y'all don't. But you didn't order the shit I asked for. So, period. <laughs> you know, like, it's just that. It's just yeah. simple. Like, it's no waiting. I don't have time to waste. Right. Like, I'm 26. Like, I, I don't have a week to waste. I don't have a day to waste. Right. You know? And I have a question, though. Go ahead. Um, did your near-death experience put, like, make you think differently about, like, the days that you have left on the earth and did that like affect of course it affected you and I'm sure it was very traumatizing but like does that make you feel like I don't have that much time and I'm not wasting my time with none of y'all because I could die tomorrow for sure for Mm -hmm. sure like for sure I don't have time to waste like I said it when I woke up a few months after I just like I feel like I'm on borrowed time like I'm not gonna waste it right like I'm not even finna lie like I don't I think it was like the second day I woke up it might have been the first day and I was like mom I'm so done with street dudes like I'm done with that that's not even my type <laughs> no more I don't even know like I just was like definitely put me in a different mind state definitely mm-hmm. put me in a different headspace um if I wasn't in that if that didn't happen to me I'd probably still be with Rico Oh, okay. Yeah. Speaking of Rico. Um, okay, so for, for those who don't know, um, Rico Cash is a, is he's a rapper, right? I think so. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and he's also like Lyra Galore's baby daddy. Right. Or baby daddy. Right. So is Lyra the reason that you guys broke up or so was he cheating? Because you know niggas he, cheat. <laughs> he was cheating. <laughs> he was definitely cheating. Uh, he cheated on me. I cheated back with uh, someone, I guess you could say, in the same industry. Someone who was not a local rapper, someone well off. And uh, that's how you get him. They be so mad when you upgrade. That's just what I do. <laughs> that's just what I do. Like, you fuck up and find somebody better, you uh-huh. know? But um, yeah, he couldn't handle that. Like, he couldn't handle that. So it ruined our relationship. Like, we didn't trust each other. Mm-hmm. The type of person I am, if, you, if I can't trust you, oh, you definitely can't trust me. Right. I'm a Scorpio. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of why we broke up. We still we're dealing with each other like all the way up until like the end of May. Um, mm-hmm. Like, do you, are you and Lyra cool? Do y'all have a relationship at all? Like, does she be stalking? Like, it's so, it's so <laughs> funny when people ask me that because mm-hmm. it's just like, you would think that I'm his other baby mama and she's like the other baby mama and we just got to be cordial. Like, I do not know her. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with her. I mean, honestly, it was never, I never had a problem with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was more so the mix up you know, towards the end of us not dealing with each other and them dealing with each other. It was more so like him. Okay, so um, I had kind of did a little research on this man album, child. Okay. Any of these songs about you? Uh, I did did go and look at the album. So you support it. Um, I uh, (laughs) looked up the lyrics. I didn't listen to it. You know, I had to scroll through, like, (laughs) look for my name real quick because, you know, he's spiteful. Mm -hmm. And we haven't been on, like, the best 
of the terms. So I just was really looking to see if he was talking shit about me. Because if you look at his album previously, it's like half of it is about me as well. Mm -hmm. So and that's when we were together. Okay. Um, but yeah, I did look through. Uh, I was mentioned in probably like six or seven songs. How many songs is on the my album? My last bitch this, my last, you know, I, I was. And you know, it's his music, it's, it's his art. It's whatever, you know? The only thing is, one of the songs that was released was a song that he did write about me when we were together. Mm -hmm. um, he never finished it, though. Like, I have the song on my phone. Aww. You want me to show you? We, I don't know, because they might show try you. to get our episode taken down. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> but I have the song on my phone. It's not finished. Uh -huh. So obviously we were together, so it's in present tense. Oh, we okay, were together. okay, I get it. The first verse, it wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. the, so when he, he released it, like I looked, and the second verse was in past tense, because mm -hmm. obviously he finished it when we were not, we are not. together. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the discrepancy of the song is just like out of pocket. That is why I couldn't be hit, like, he couldn't be with me. Right. Because I would have beat his ass. Period. Like, it was no way. Like, that you're you making, release you're releasing this. songs about another bitch. Right. And just for clarification, the only love song on the album is about work. Okay. Like a true Capricorn. Yeah. That's, there's no girl, love songs. I remember I used to date a Capricorn. I remember I DM'd you. I was like, sis, I dated a Capricorn. You were like, girl, that's the uh, card of the devil. I don't even have no advice, bro. Like, they be dragging me through the mud. No, like, seriously. I don't. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. But... Can I Just, ask a question though? Go ahead. You are so beautiful. Like I can't. Like I'm Thank not you. gay. I don't think. Like sometimes I be feeling like girl. Like I. You I could not date a girl. Okay. I would not date a girl. Right. I, I would not like be like okay. I'm about to get married to a woman. Right. You could never but have I think feelings. You're beautiful. Right. Yeah. Thank what you. like. I've had a lot of plastic surgery. Okay. Like I've been through lipo twice. I got okay. my boobs done, and I also got ass shots too. Okay. Like I don't have a BBL. I got shots. Oh really? Yeah. So okay. I, like I was doing research and. And obviously, like, I have, like, kind of a relationship with your mom. And mm -hmm. I was watching as, you know, everything was going on with your, your near-death experience. Can you explain okay. what happened to you? And, like, even after that happened to you, like, would you advise girls to... Go to, do that. To go do that. Okay. Um, okay, so near-death experience. Um, everybody knows who has, like, everybody who has ass shots knows that you have to go in rounds. Like, you can't just put a whole bunch of that shit in your ass. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had went, like, two rounds before, and then the third round that I went is when I had the complications. And um, basically, everything was fine. You know, I was taking my pictures. I was like, look at my ass. You know, I was really, I was happy with it, you know? And then next thing I know, I got sick. Like, I just was, like, coughing, and I had congestion in my chest. Um, I couldn't breathe for real. Mm -hmm. So I was, like, laying in the bed, and I end up telling my mom, next thing you know, like, Rico ends up coming, and the ambulance come. That's the last thing I remember. I was in a coma for two weeks. I have a couple, I know a couple of people that say that they, like, died and came back, uh -huh. and they said their experience was amazing, and they said, they did, they said their experience was amazing, they saw, you know the white light that everyone yeah. talks about? Yeah. They're like, oh, we saw the white light, and, um, like, it, it just wasn't my time yet, like, I yeah. couldn't, they were like, I wanted to stay there so bad, and it just wasn't my time yet. So, to sum it up, um, my situation was more like, I feel like when I was in a coma, I was put through trials to fight for my life. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like I had to prove that I wanted to come back. Right. I do not feel like a white light came and saved me and it was Jesus Christ. Like, I, that did not happen for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was more so like... It was more so like a test. And I woke up fighting. I woke up fighting the nurses. Like, after I woke up, um, I had... I woke up and I was like... This ain't no real hospital. Right. Like, I was real, like, suspicious, and I was, like, choking the nurses out. Like, wow. yeah, they had me sedated. So, like, as being such a beautiful girl, why do you, why do you feel, because I have my own reasons why I feel like I'd be needing plastic surgery, but mm -hmm. why, like, you're so pretty, why do you feel Thank like you, you needed to do that? Like, why do you feel okay. like I need to ask or I need to be skinnier? Like, what, like, what pressures you to feel like... I need to do this. Okay, so for me, it's probably like the fact that I've always been like a slim girl with a fast metabolism. Like if you've seen, you've seen my body after I had three kids, like I had no waist, like I just always was very slim. And 
I was around people and around influence that I feel like wasn't very good for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was people around me, like, pushing me to get ass shots. It was people, like, pressuring me, like, oh, no, you need to get this. We need to pipe you up. Because, like, let me just make it clear. I was lit. I was that girl before the body, before the boobs, before my lips, before anything. Like, Mm -hmm. I didn't have my body done. I just, you know, was lit and had money. And, like, people was like, who the fuck is she? Right. Um, But I ended up, like I said, getting around people that weren't of the best influence who did kind of push me more so, like, oh, you need to get this, you need to get that. More so, like, peer pressure and bad influence. So um, what would you say to girls that, like, are around your age that maybe feel like, you know, like, they need to do this or that? Like, would you would you want, would you be like, oh, if you don't like it, fix it? Or are you like, oh, just wait till you're, like, in your mid-20s? Like, what would you tell someone? What would you tell your younger self? Um, I would tell my younger self, honestly, is to not go the, sh- so I had a problem with like taking shortcuts, like, oh, this is the quicker, the faster, the easier way mm-hmm. I can hurry up and get there this way. I'm very strategic. So I've taken a lot of shortcuts in life and you can't do that with everything, right? You can't just take shortcuts. Like a lot of girls, like they don't want to, for example, I couldn't get a BBL cause I didn't have enough fat in my waist. I didn't have a waist. So the only choice for a skinny, a lot of skinny girls is shots. shots. And skinny girls message me now. And like so many girls have messaged me, like asking me and talking to me about my situation. And I just told them like, girl, do this, do this to gain weight, whatever. Like, don't do that because Mm -hmm. like, whether it's now, whether it's a few days after, whether it's 10 years from now, it seems to always become a complication because it's not something that's supposed to be in your body. Right. Um, honestly, my recent, I know a lot of people was like, bitch, you almost died. Why the fuck did you go get a BBL? So I was going to go get a BBL because I wanted to get my shots removed. Right. So I got my shots removed and, and they replaced me. Yes. Mm-hmm. I took a pedamine, which I won't even, you know, like tell people to take. Mm-hmm. It's just what I did. I took a pedamine. I was drink, eating muffins and shit and bread like at midnight, <laughs> uh, drinking protein shakes. And then I gained enough weight for them to replace it basically. Okay. So, um, I know that you're like really big on spirituality, obviously. For sure. How's that affected you in life? Because people, like, I feel like people are super judgmental. Like I'm the least judgmental person, Yeah. but I feel like there's so many people, um, that are judgmental. Like, has it affected you in like relationships and like friendships? Like, like, Oh, don't be here friend. She's a witch. She's going to put a hex on you. Like how does, how does that go? Um, honestly, like I don't have a lot of friends. People who know me know that. Mm -hmm. Um, I've pretty much had like one, best friend my whole life um when her dad found out what I did I don't know why the fuck he said this like but he was like oh don't eat none of her food don't drink her water don't eat her food none of that like stay away from her basically um I don't know why like I'm not I would never it just was really confusing because you know typically there's a stereotype about women putting shit in food to make people fall in love with them I don't know why he would be afraid of me doing that to my best friend. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I know people are skeptical. Honestly, I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. It doesn't faze me. Uh, I understand and I empathize that people don't, people fear what they don't know. Right. So I don't take it personal. Like, pretty much, I promise you, every single person that I dated was skeptical about it. Mm -hmm. But they asked for some work. Period. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so I saw um, on the Conjure Family show that you said that, like, a lot of um, people will call and have you do, not call, but like buy rituals to put on mm-hmm. celebrities. Mm-hmm. And you said that NBA Youngboy was like the number one. Yeah. Why? Girl, I don't know. I can, really can't tell you. Like, I don't know if it's because he's from Louisiana and, you know, this is very, he is very handsome, I popular. Say. No comment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the reason for it. I don't know the delusion about it. Maybe it's the fan base. I don't know what it is. And it was a lot of younger girls. You know, that's kind of his fan base, I think, is like younger girls. Okay, I don't so, know. um, because I know that there's like a lot of like misconceptions about hoodoo. So I'm going to mm-hmm. bring your, um, your mom in in a second. Okay. But I feel like pe- what people don't know is that like, it, isn't it for that for that stuff to work? You have to have already some type of connection with the person. Okay, like you, so I can't just be like, oh, I want Chris, I want to marry Chris Brown. No, you cannot. <laughs> like, okay, so in my terms, like everybody does different work. Everybody practices different forms of magic. For me, this is what I tell people: when I do work for you, say I'm gonna do love work for you and your man. Um, I am not making feelings appear. I am not 
you know, taking love out of nowhere and putting it into your union. I am only bringing energy that's already there to the surface. Mm -hmm. You have to understand people have pride. They have ego. They have anger. They have pain, resentment. All these things kind of like weigh on our feelings for a person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes true feelings of love get, you know, pushed down. And all I'm doing is bringing it to the surface. So mm -hmm. I can't make someone love you. Oh, I won't make someone love you. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, and if they don't already have it for you, okay. You know so, what I'm saying? Right. That makes sense. Oh, okay. We, we're going to bring Miss Lala in and then we're going to talk more about hoodoo. Okay. Okay. Hey, you guys, we're back. And, uh, we brought in another guest. We have Miss Lala Ahari. Hello. Go ahead. You Hello. can. Oh, your camera's Hello. here. Just tell them who you are. Hi, I am Lala Nutiahari, owner of The Conjure, owner of Ahari TV, The Conjure family, and um, I'm excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. You're big welcome. boss. <laughs> big, big boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, you guys, um, if you don't know, uh, Miss Lala is the, on the owner of The Conjure, and she has made like a multi-million dollar business from her family like what she was born into. And that's a blessing. Yeah. Like, can you tell us a little bit about your business? And yeah. when did you, like, when did you decide to make what you were born into a business? Like, what, what motivated you to do that? The, the business part of it mm -hmm. really flourished when I think I started wanting to just help people. Right. I know that sounds a little corny, but when I realized what I could do, I said, people need to see this. Mm -hmm. Like, they need to learn this. They need to know. Yeah. It was around the um, the Michael Brown, the Trayvon Martin, all those, you know, it was like back to back to back police brutality, you know, and mm -hmm. we were marching. There was a lot of mourning, a lot of pain. And I was just thinking, like, we need to get, get this out. Like, we need to show people that they can um, change. Right. Their yeah. circumstances, right. you know. No, and, you can. And yeah. I came to Instagram, and I promise you, it was like overnight. Mm -hmm. It was like at the speed of light. Really, the first year, um, I hit a million and a half. The second year, six. Third Whew. year, yeah. ten million. Like yes. it just, it just kept, yeah. And then we're on our fourth year now, and it's just it has exploded. Um, I feel like I've kept spirit first, mm -hmm. people first, mm -hmm. and um, that's another reason why we are where we are. So what are some um, common misconceptions of hoodoo? Because like, I'm a very open-minded person, and I do believe in God, I do believe in Jesus, but I also believe in, in everything else. Yeah. I feel like, for me, like the Bible really is very contradictory. So I don't let it like run my life. Um, but I do believe in God, and I do believe in Jesus. Right. But, I mean, is Buddha, like, a sin? Are the people that praise the sun, are they going to hell, too? Like, <laughs> what, 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 what are, like, why, I don't, why are, why is hoodoo deemed as, like, bad? Well, one of the misconceptions is that we don't believe in God. That's not true. That's not true at all. Um, we do. We also just believe in many. So where certain people say Jesus is the only way, we know other ways. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they work. And, and, and they work. Yeah. <laughs> um, a, a major way is your own ancestry, mm -hmm. your own ancestors, honoring your own ancestors, going to your own ancestors and saying, hey, I need this. They work fast. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, other, you know, um, deities. deities and pantheons mm -hmm. of religion, you know, um, have their own spirit. Mm -hmm. um, we pray, right? We pray to who? Who do you pray to? I you, pray to God. But, but, do you, but you don't see them, right? But you don't see you, them. You don't, you don't see Jesus. Mm -hmm. You don't see, but you know that they exist. That they exist. That, that person, that, that right. entity you exists, feel them. right? You feel mm -hmm. them. It's the same thing mm -hmm. um, as conjure. Mm -hmm. If you pray, you've conjured. Because mm -hmm. you're believing in something that's not there, right? You have to have faith that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And you're lighting a candle, and you have altars in church. Mm -hmm. You have um, altars when someone dies on the side of the road or gets shot. What do they do? They bring flowers. Candles. Mm -hmm. They bring offerings. It's the same thing. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I agree. I agree. And a lot of um, a lot. Just to put it out there, a lot of some of the most powerful spells that we do come out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, it spells in the Bible true. too. So, how do you decipher um, 
for my people that you know are into hoodoo how do you decipher who's real and who's not real because there are a lot of people out here that'll be like oh i'm a psychic i'm this i'm that like how like how do you know like as a consumer as far as a psychic it really is no way of knowing until you possibly you know get that reading Mm -hmm. um I would be, you know, I wouldn't give as much information to a psychic because if they can read your spirit, they can read your spirit. Mm -hmm. And some psychics, you know, they are psychic mediums where they are able to hone in to your own spirit guides and your spirit guides are telling them what to give you. Mm -hmm. So that is, to me, the the true gift. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to hoodoo or conjure or any kind of spell work, I would say to look at that person's life, Mm -hmm. you know, see if they're... (laughs) Prospering, and, I, and, and you know, I'm not trying to be funny. I swear to God, it's I'm not, not trying to be funny. It's for real. But it's like if 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 you got a root worker who is broke or not prospering, they don't make no. How's she gonna make you some money? Right. Like, okay. Like, okay. I see. I see. I see. I see. They, they yeah. got sick. They got like some issues going on. You know, they're not cleansing. They don't. They got some healing. You can. And it's and it's clear. It don't make one plus one is not equal. It's exactly. not enough. Where's yeah. the proof? Exactly. Right. No, you, no, you, I you want to see the prosperity in somebody's life. You want to see the growth. You want to, you know, take your time and watch them. I don't, I don't have a problem with somebody coming to my page. And there's people who have watched me for a year before they bought a candle. Mm-hmm. And then they're happy they did, you know. But I don't have a problem with that. I, I say watch people. Mm-hmm. And people, study them. people talk about, like... So people talk like to talk about like how we have our wealth and how we have this, how we have that. Like, that goes along... To say like your life is a reflection of your work Period. your life, is, life a is a reflection of your of ability to manifest of mm-hmm. your ability to create the life that you want mm-hmm. like to me that's how you know it's real and if you're not doing that how can you teach somebody else to do it how can right. you do it for someone else so what are some other misconceptions um, i just i hate that people look at it as a bad thing that it's a bad thing that um, was intentional and on purpose. It's intentional. Because yeah. right. from what I, because I've been doing a lot of research on all type of stuff. I, from the research that yeah. I did, um, like back in the day, like when we were slaves, like um, we weren't allowed to like use our whatever we wanted to do. Everything was stripped. Everything was stripped away from us, and yeah. we were forced into being Christians. Yeah. So like on the low, people would do like do their ancestral prayers and altars and things that they wanted to do on the low. So I felt they said that the Europeans tricked the Africans or whoever was enslaved into thinking that their religion was wrong and it was bad. And that is why now like people believe that like ancestral religions are bad. I was actually going to say they still are tricking them. That is absolutely <laughs> factual. Mm-hmm. That is literally factual. They, like, they, yeah, they still are tricking them. Yeah. Um, there's people, uh, I think we were on one another blog, and um, there were so many people on there saying, um, you know, how evil it was and the blood of Jesus and all kind of things. And I don't, I don't really blame people for being in the space that they're in because they're just in the space that they're in. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, like Christina said, they fear what they don't understand. So that's okay. Um, It's the judgment. Mm -hmm. It's, you don't know who I am. You don't know what I've done. You don't know how many people across the world over so many years that we have helped. Mm -hmm. And that I'd rather somebody do their research on us Mm -hmm. and and on myself and, and see for themselves. Right. You know, do your research. So anybody who is trying to understand, you know, African tradition, religions, conjure, hoodoo, all of it, even if you just want to call it witchcraft, um, because they're calling us witches, but, you know, I don't call myself that, um, do the research. Right. Gain your own understanding. Right. I just want to add in there, like, for, for white people to use the Christian Bible and the Christian religion to tell slaves that you are supposed to be a slave, you are supposed to serve me, like, sure. if that isn't a clue enough that this is used, you know, part of this is used... For oppression. Yeah, for oppression and to, you know, that's proof enough for me. Right. You know? Well, do you guys have any projects coming up? Anything that we need to be tuned into? Tina, the rapper, you ain't gonna do no music? No, 
bro. It's just the lifestyle. And I really, really, really chilled on that. Like, yeah. I really have relaxed on the lifestyle. Like, I, I was going crazy before, you know, I'm more... It was the Jets for me, sis. Oh, it's still the Jets. Oh, we still, still on the Jets. Jets. Yeah. Still still the Jets. Jets. It's just a little less strip club, you know. Yeah. I went to the strip club, like, one time last year. Got chewed out for it. Um, How much did you spend? I only I only spent, like, 10 to 12000 on like, as far as money section, mm-hmm. maybe, like, 3000 so fifteen. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Slow your voice. And Miss Lala, Miss Lala's like, mm. <laughs> I'm like, that's money. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah I got you know. out. But you know, uh, I want to say I was married and I was put up and away. And you know, I've always been here in Atlanta, but I was put up. So a lot of people didn't know who I was. They just see me on Instagram, who is this girl who's posting her lifestyle. And I didn't know a lot of stuff either. Mm -hmm. So when I, you know, separated from him, I was like a kid in a candy shop. I was like a sheltered kid who just came out to the world. I was like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Y'all be going to the club? Oh, I want to come. Oh, y'all throw money? Let me get 40,000. Like, you know, I was really like new. Mm -hmm. I was brand new. That's all. So, you know, I didn't chill. I I didn't have my fun. You you know, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Just overindulgence. You know, I've chilled on it. So before we wrap the episode, Miss Lala, is there anything you want to say? You want to tell us anything you got coming up next? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, We, well, currently we still have the the Conjure family on the Conjure.com. Y'all, y'all got to watch the TV show. Uh, I don't know if I should call it a TV show, but y'all got to watch it. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of emotion, Mm -hmm. a lot of raw energy. Um, we are can't talk about we didn't sign contracts yeah we signed contracts so it's giving big checks yeah Yeah. it is (laughs) so we can't talk about that but um a lot a lot this is you're you're gonna see a lot more Uh, very soon we'll be able to talk talk about it soon as soon as we can talk about it you know i'm gonna be the one okay i'm gonna need you to come back on the show after we can talk about it okay (laughs) okay you guys so um this is a wrap for the hollywood group chat podcast i just need y'all to look in y'all's cameras and tell people where they can find you which one is mine which one? Which I don't one? know where's mine. All of them? You look good on all of them, so. Thank you, babe. <laughs> uh, yes, you can find me on Instagram at Tina Marie Ahari. And um, that's the only place I want you to look for me. Um. <laughs> so. uh, official.lala Ahari. This is the camera? Okay. Official.lala Ahari. Um, you can also find me at Conjured Hoodoo. We still have the number one um, spiritual candles. In the world. In the world. Period. In the world. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you guys, this episode was sponsored by Nyack Cognac. Um, get y'all a bottle of some Nyack. <laughs> we drinking that dark today. Yeah. Um, this episode was also sponsored by Adam and Eve Sex Toys. Go get y'all whatever y'all need because these niggas mm-mm, get somebody else to do it. So go get you a vibrator. <laughs> go get you whatever you need from Adam and Eve. Discount code REAL. R-E-A-L. <laughs> Okay, it's a wrap, y'all. Okay, bye. Okay. Okay. That was fun. That was fun.